Hello one and all, Jasper here and fucking hell. This script was on the back burner for a bit as I slowly typed it out because I thought I had plenty of time. No way CA would update the green skins when factions like Britonia, Norska, and Vampire Counts are in a much more desperate state. I even had a joke about how I didn't care about those factions and that all I needed was my faction to get new stuff. And now that it's happening, I just feel sad. Still thrilled about this DLC, and I have a lot of hopes for what can be done with it, though even I'll admit, I'm probably asking for too much as in the first draft of this script I was making a Champions of WOG DLC. But either way, let's jump into what I hope is done with the green skins. Let's start with the most important update that I would want, and it's to make the legendary lords more unique, specifically the orcs. While the goblin lords offer very unique ways of how their factions are played, Rom with his cauldron that can make do with all sorts of crazy shit, and Skarsnik where he loses a third of the roster forcing him to only use goblins, yay. The orc legendary lords by comparison, while having unique skill trees, don't have anything on the campaign map that really lets you dive into a different playstyle for the green skins. And because of that, Grom leaves pretty much all of them in the dust in regards to who you should play. There is never a reason to play as the others unless you really want a different starting location or you're just really attached to that specific character. So here are my ideas to make the other legendary lords into special green snowflakes that I know they can be. All the mechanics I'm giving them exist in the game one way or another already because I'm not original enough to come up with good ideas, and also it's more reasonable for me to ask CA to just copy and paste these mechanics rather than building something brand new from scratch. Now, let's start with Wazog, the great green prophet and the best dancer in the entire game, and I'm kind of proud of this idea. You see, green skins worship two gods. One is Mork, and the other is Gork. So for this faction, I thought, what if you took the mechanic from Cathay? They got this yin-yang system that was recently updated, and by recently I mean like a fucking year ago, where each province has three modes. Yin mode, which encourages growth and construction, Yang mode, which encourages research and recruitment, and Harmony mode, which is all about money. Slap some green paint on this, and we can have a Gork mechanic, which buffs recruited units, making them cheaper, the Mork mechanic, which increases research and growth, and the Wamani. This also does something nice and orky. Maybe a boost to post-battle loot and sacking. On to the next green skin, we have Azag the Slaughterer, who I have a couple of ideas for. You see, Azog is a very special green boy thanks to that hat of his, the Crown of Sorcery. It has strong ties to a punk-ass bitch named Nagash, who is a necromancer, and any who wear it gain access to necromatic spells, and specifically in this case, that would be the Lore of Death. This is why for a long time, Azog was the only greenskin able to use such magic, at least until the giant swamp hags were introduced in a DLC. So now, instead of just the Lore of Death, I think we need to do something to make him a bit more unique on the battlefield. And why not give Azag access to the lore of vampires, specifically raise dead, allowing him to raise zombies to fight for him. That would again give Azag a bit of a unique flair when you're actually doing battles. And I am aware that apparently he can't actually do this in lore or tabletop, but counter argument, he used to be able to do it until they nixed it because of balance and it was a headache. But I don't care about balance, I want fun, and the most fun is for green skins to be number one. Plus, I don't think giving him the raised dead mechanics is going to shake up the meta that much. But this next idea I have might, because I also want to give him the raised dead mechanic for the vampire counts in the campaign map. A mixture of green skins and undead destroying the world. What a sight to see, right? Now, I know I just said I don't care about balance, but even I'll admit, this would make Azag probably a busted motherfucker. I'm not a professional at anyway, so maybe it's not that big. So naturally, some limits need to be made. First, the WOG button in battle only affects green skin units. You're not going to be able to boost those zombie units melee attack by sixfold. And at the start of a campaign, you can only spawn zombies. No other vampire units. Unless, of course, you decide to be very unorky and give in to the crown of Nagash. Boom! That's right, Azog gets two mechanics, not just one. Stealing from Malice Darkblade and his mechanic and fighting off a demon that is possessing him, Azog is in a similar boat with the crown, fighting against its corruption and staying orky. And if you decide to stay orky, 
Well, Azak will boost green skin units and his combat abilities. But if he gives in to the crown, then you get access to spawning other undead units and all sorts of magical buffs to increase his spellcasting ability. I think this gives Azok a very nice breath of fresh air. Or rotten death air. Whatever. Point is, there is now a much stronger reason to play as him and a wonderful new experience. Now, let's take a break from the orcs and talk about goblins, specifically Skarsnik and how I hate him. Yeah, of all the greenskin lords, Skarsnik is one I often stay clear of. Cutting away a third of the roster and only letting me recruit said units in one singular location just does not sit right with me. Now, don't worry, I'm not saying get rid of it, but at least let me recruit orcs in all my territories when I get Carrick Apex, okay? Also, for someone who really relies on being sneaky and using ambushes, it's a shame he doesn't have the stance stalking, which gives him a chance to ambush armies when attacking. I mean, they gave it to Alithinar, so I don't see why Skarsnik can't have it. That's all I would really change for him, because I'm not quite sure what other faction mechanics would go with him. Maybe there is one, or maybe they're already working on one. But now, we can talk about the best green skin, Grimgor Ironhide. Such a simple orc deserves a simple mechanic, and what would fit better than the momentum mechanic that Scarbrand and Torox have? For those of you who don't know, momentum is a mechanic for when your army wins a battle, the campaign's movement range refills, allowing your unit to move and possibly attack someone else, which will give him more movement range, and on and on it goes until all of Grimgor's enemies have been destroyed. After all, Grimgor has never gone three days without a fight, and thus everything should be done to make sure he gets those fights. Now, with every legendary lord suited up with a mechanic, it makes sense that now we need to throw some new units into the roster, plug some thematic holes. Like, for starters, some fucking spear boys. Greenskin struggle a bit in dealing with large units in the early game, and considering Grimgor is surrounded by ogres and fucking Kolek, a cheap anti-large unit would make it a little bit nicer. The same for Grom, those Bretonian knights are a bitch and a half sometimes. Also, even though I kind of despise goblins for not being as big as orcs, I have to admit, we need a more heavily armored goblin infantry option. The fact we only have three infantry units for goblins feels so minimal, and really, Grom's the only one who can really take advantage of it, and Skarsnik to a lesser extent. Now, I'm not asking for goblins that can demolish Chaos Chosen or Black Orcs, but maybe something on the level of Foot Squires? Speaking of Black Orcs, actually, I would like some more versions of him, at least some Black Orcs with shields, and also for the big guns. It really seems limiting that you only have a single unit of Black Orcs and a single unit of big guns. I also wouldn't mind another artillery unit that has more effective at taking out large enemies, so the Spear Chucka would fit such a role perfectly. The roster for the Savage Orcs could also use some sprucing up. Some armor-piercing Savage Orcs with great weapons sounds pretty darn perfect to me. And my last addition as far as units go is more goblins. Now, I'm not super knowledgeable about the lore, but I've heard a lot of talk about forest goblins, and they sound like they would be a fun addition to the game, maybe even with a corresponding legendary lord. I have no idea who that would be, but I'm sure he exists. Speaking of, what about other legendary lords? Hey guys, I just watched the video that Total War YouTube channel released where they casually announce who the Legendary Lords are going to be. And sadly, it's not going to be my choice. It looks like they're going to be with Gorbad Ironclaw. Again, I'm not super familiar with the wider lore of Warhammer, so maybe this is going to be the best choice. Personally, I still would rather have Gorfang Rockgut, but either way, good to have another orc. But I'm still going to talk about why I think Gorfang would be an amazing character. Well, Gorfang Rockgut is probably the one I want the most, and I already have a good shtick with him. Since Gorfang is the smartest orc ever, unless you count Azog with his cheating warped headband of intellect, I think it would make a lot of sense to have him be the only greenskin faction that can trade and use the caravan system. After all, I think he's the only orc to ever actually negotiate deals with people, letting them pass through his lands unmolested if they pay a toll. This next bit might be a bit more controversial, but I think that the wog mechanic needs a little tweak. I can't speak for most of you, but I find myself not using it as often as I feel like I should. I usually save it for using it on powerful factions that give me a really good trophy, like the dwarfs and the lizardmen. 
then I just use the benefits of said trophy and having a full bar of walk to enjoy the boost that I get, which is growth, lower recruitment cost, and leadership. So to encourage people to use it more, how does this sound? You declare WOG on a faction, and a turn time limit starts like the original. Here's the thing, as you fight battles with said faction, take their settlements or raise them, you gain points to build a trophy or a pile of shinies, whatever. I don't know the lore justification for this, but as you accrue these points, you will eventually reach a threshold that gives your entire faction buffs similar to the trophies. Now. Unlike the trophies, these buffs don't disappear, so because of that, we might have to nerf them a bit. Instead of how the biggest stunties trophies would normally give you minus 20% construction costs and plus 12% weapon strength, instead, maybe at most, it gives you minus 10% construction cost and plus 8% weapon strength, or maybe even less, 6%. And while we're kind of on the topic of trophies and boosts, some factions need new trophies. Specifically, the Demons of Chaos. I am sorry, but it's so boring and stupid how Nurgle, Zinch, Korn, and Slanesh all boost your magic. Especially Korn. You know what Korn hates? Magic. So why the fuck would he boost it? It works for Zinch, but Nurgle should give Greenskins more health or regeneration, Slanesh boosting speed and charge bonus, and Korn increases to weapon attack and damage. Even a toddler could have thought of this. Come on, CA. And now, to finish this off, there are two bugs that need to be fixed. First, Maya Wog armies just disappear. There have been too many times when after a battle, my Wog army just goes away, leaving the army I recruited all alone and about to get its ass kicked despite not losing a single unit in the battle I just fought. Also, it's annoying how despite my army sitting in a settlement, my WOG army will still take casualties if the climate is damaging, unless I do this weird thing where I go into Force March and then into the Underway stance. Fix that please, just let my WOG armies replenish like my regular armies when I'm in a settlement. And I think that's all. I don't expect most of this to come true, but you never know. And either way, it was fun to record my thoughts and share them. With all that laid out, stay safe, and I hope you all have a wonderful day.